Hey, it's Professor Dave. Let's look at chemical equilibria. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Sometimes chemical reactions are not unidirectional, they are reversible. The reactants create the products, which then go right back and create reactants. This means there is both a forward and a reverse reaction. When the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are the same, this system is at dynamic equilibrium. Chemistry is happening, but because the reactions are happening at the same rate, there doesn't appear to be any activity. There is a balance. We learned how to use stoichiometry to discuss limiting reagents and how much of the products to expect. But these were for unidirectional reactions where we assume that all the reactants make products and then the reaction is over. With equilibria, it's a little more complicated to calculate what the concentrations of each substance will be at equilibrium. So we're going to have to do a little bit of math to be able to describe the system. For example, let's look at this equilibrium. Let's say we start with one mole of PCL5, allow the system to reach equilibrium, and then once at equilibrium, we measure that there are 0.135 moles of PCL3. So how much of the other two things are there? To answer this, we can make something called an ice box. These letters stand for initial, change, and equilibrium. We set them up like this. For initial, we put the initial amounts of each thing. We started with just one mole of reactant, so we put one there and zeros for the products, since there wasn't any of those at first. Then for the change, we don't know exactly how much the change was to get to equilibrium, so we call it x. For the reactant, we put negative x because it is being depleted. And in this case, all of the stoichiometric coefficients are 1, so as x moles of reactant are being depleted, x moles of each product are being formed. We would make these 2 or 3x as necessary if the coefficients were different. And for the products, x is positive because these are being formed. Then lastly, we add up the initial and the change to give the amounts present at equilibrium. For the reactant, this is 1 minus x, and for the products, it's simply x. We measured the final concentration of PCL3 as 0.135 moles, which here will correspond to x, and we therefore know all the other concentrations by plugging in x. Simple, no? Well, it can get trickier, as we will see. But first, let's learn about equilibrium expressions. Every equilibrium has an equilibrium constant, Kc. It will be given by the concentrations of the products, each raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients, over the concentration of the reactants, each raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients. This is called the equilibrium constant expression. One thing this constant tells us is whether the products or reactants are favored in the equilibrium. If Kc is much greater than 1, that means the numerator is bigger, so we are creating more products. If Kc is much less than 1, that means the denominator is bigger and we are creating more reactants. In this video, we're going to talk about the different ways in which we could calculate the equilibrium constant K. So let's start with this problem. Nitrogen reacts with chlorine to produce nitrogen trichloride. At equilibrium, the concentrations of each gas were found to be 0.15 for N2, 0.25 for Cl2, and 0.50 moles per liter for NCl3. Calculate the equilibrium constant Kc. Now the first thing we need to do is write a balanced chemical equation. Nitrogen gas is diatomic, it's N2, and the same is true for chlorine gas. And it's going to produce nitrogen trichloride, NCl3. So we need a 1 a 3 and a 2. We have two nitrogen atoms on each side and six chlorine atoms on both sides. Now the next thing we need to do is write the equilibrium expression for Kc. So K is the ratio of the products divided by the reactants. So it's going to be NCl3, that's a product, it's on the right side, and the stuff on the left side, N2 and Cl2, that's going to go on the bottom. 
Now, when writing the equilibrium expression, you need to keep in mind that the coefficients of the balanced chemical equation become the exponents of the expression. So we have a 2 in front of NCl3, so we need to put that on the exponent of this equation. We have a 1 for N2 and a 3 for Cl2. Now, we're given the values at equilibrium, so we can plug this into this formula, and that's going to help us to calculate Kc, the equilibrium concentration constant. So the value for NCl3, that's 0.50. And so we need to square it. And then the value for N2, that's 0.15. And for Cl2, it's 0.25, but raised to the third power. So go ahead and type that in. So you should get 106.7 for the value of Kc. And so that's the answer for this problem.